Welcome to Hash Method on the Pure Momentum Network. My name is David Tartar, and I'm with my wife, Pamela Tartar. Hello, everyone. This is Pamela. So happy to be here with you. <laughs> Hi, Pamela. This, <laughs> Hi. Is, this is where we do a conglomerate of news stories. A hash of a, news stories. A hash of news stories. A, a <laughs> mixture of of news stories. And so we have taken some from all the ends of the earth and brought them together. And we're going to do that for two hours, the next two hours for you. And um, hopefully you're going to enjoy it. So without further ado, let me go ahead and begin by telling you about an Indiana-based energy company by the name of Nysource. And it appears to be using discriminatory, discriminatory hiring practices to impose the government corporate mandate of conformity. According to the website truthvolt.com, earlier this year a man who had been offered a job with the company unexpectedly had his offer of employment rescinded when corporate officials discovered that he had been homeschooled. Since then, the company had doubled down on its position, telling the Homeschool Legal Defense Association that their policy is firm and thus intractable. No consideration of applicants who are not educated, end quote, in a government school because the company doesn't consider anything less as valid. What do you think about that, Pamela? Oh, it lights me on fire. It just lights me on fire. I've been fighting about the education, quote, unquote, system. They absolutely want to keep everyone dumbed down. They absolutely want everyone to conform and to be nice little worker bees and nice little consumer bees, and that's all they want. And they are going to force people, or at least they're going to try to make people think they're forced into going to these horrific prison camp preparation places that we call public schools. Mm -hmm. And all it's doing is trying to force us into doing that by saying, well, you won't get a job if you aren't. And I'm going to tell you something. Homeschooled people are much better educated and much more balanced people, which is what the corporate system does not want. That's correct. And their dispositions seem to be a lot more even keeled. You know, if you meet somebody that was homeschooled, they are so much more peaceful and balanced. And they're, I don't know, it's just crazy. But it says smart accredited homeschooled need not apply. The story was first reported in May, according to the website. According to those reports, the prospective male employee had the relevant years of job experience as well as college courses in a relevant field, even making the dean's list at an accredited recognized state college. He also had the requisite technical certifications necessary for the job and they well that's a lawsuit right there so he should he should get lawyers and i don't care even though they did mention the uh the legal people with for homeschoolers Mm -hmm. they've got to go further than that because this is illegal as heck Mm -hmm. this is just and i'm telling you the only thing it has to do with is trying to force everybody to go to these education systems Mm -hmm. that are simply to ruin our children yeah, well, he's got an attorney, uh, the Homeschool Association attorney, which is SLADA. Uh, Mike Donnelly shared some of the details of the dispute and correspondence with NYSORS. He said that the organization sent, quote unquote, numerous letters explaining that homeschooling is both a legal and accepted educational practice in the country and in Ohio, where the education took place. Donnelly explained to the company's attorney, Adele O'Connor, that indeed the state of Ohio specifically considers a homeschool diploma to be, quote, equivalent to an accredible public education. And he said that despite the company's claim and stated position, it has no legal impediment to hiring a homeschool graduate. But they have actually doubled down on that now and have said that it's a company-wide policy now. It's not just on an individual basis. Yeah, but, you know, you can't discriminate against someone for sexual preference That's right. or for religion mm-hmm. or for race or any of that stuff. This is discriminatory. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's insane discrimination. <laughs> and if you can pass all the tests, which is what all this common core stuff is about anyway, then right. you should be absolutely qualified because if he didn't pass the tests, he wouldn't have graduated. 
Well, I do have to put something in here. We, on our video page on puremomentum.net, under the video tab, please go watch the Common Core video there. It will tell you exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. Common Core has nothing to do with education. It has to do with political socialism. Mm -hmm. It wants everyone to be the same. doesn't matter if they're educated or not. As long as they can stand in line and show up on time and be abnormal as you can be. A child isn't supposed to be nailed down like that. That's right. And it absolutely squashes the person's ability to learn. Mm -hmm. They don't want anybody to learn. They want them to be downloaded with programs. And that's all. And we are not machines. We are human beings. And we process information. We are not like a computer where you download a program and it plays it. Mm -hmm. That's not what we are. That's right. But this and angers me something awful. Yeah, well, basically what this company is saying, you might have the education as far as the technical knowledge that you need to do the job that we're hiring for, but you don't have the programming. That's it. That's mm -hmm. exactly it. Yep. The layers of programming are not there because when you start in kindergarten, and some of them are preschool, and go all the way up through 12, we're not even talking about college, but up through 12, you have many, many, many layers of programming sure. there. And sure. that's what they want. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh, this makes me so mad. Mm -hmm. And everybody, everybody that does homeschooling, I mean, they are so much more balanced and they're so much more intelligent. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we won't beat that, uh, that horse down anymore. But, yes, that really angers me. All right, what's your next story? Well, my first story is about the House votes to curb NSA scrutiny of Americans' communications. And this was in the New York Times. Okay. And it was written by Charlie Savage. And uh, here we go. Washington, the House of Representatives, um, late on Thursday, voted to bar the National Security Agency from looking for Americans' communications without a warrant within a database of emails and phone calls it gathers while targeting foreigners, a technique critics have labeled a backdoor search loophole. Mm. You know, and, and the thing that gets me about this is none of this matters because we have been under a state of emergency and anything the dictator in chief and his uh, chief and his authorities can do anything they want because we're still under a state of emergency, which most people don't know, which totally rules out anything the Congress does or anything the Constitution does. Mm -hmm. And they re-up it every year. They Every president re-ups it every year. That's right. So mm -hmm. that we'll stay under a state of emergency. So all of these things are just game playing. They're not real. It's mm -hmm. virtual, uh, yep. all of this. Okay, by a 293 to, two, to 123 vote, the House approved the ban uh, as an amendment to the, uh, to the 2015 Defense Appropriations Act. A version of the proposal had been a component in the original version of the USA Freedom Act. And that just makes me nuts because it has nothing to do with freedom. It is absolutely the opposite of freedom. And that's what we need to look at, folks. If you listen to me, the opposition is everyone that's against all life. Mm -hmm. You look at everything in the opposite way. This act was called the USA Freedom Act. That means it is the USA Slavery Act. That's right, Prisoner Act. Well, this whole Absolutely. this whole NSA thing, in my opinion, was brought out in the public eye on purpose to let us know that we are being watched so that we will police ourselves and each other. Because if that's we, absolutely right. That's right. That's if, if we think that, well, they're looking for keywords now. What are the keywords that I shouldn't be using? Well, maybe I'll just change the word that I was going to use to this other word, and now all of a sudden I'm paranoid and I'm making sure that I'm walking on eggshells everywhere that I go and I don't say the wrong thing and I'm not acting uh, possibly discriminatory towards somebody, even though all the companies can do that now. Right. You know, no, you're, just... a, you're absolutely right. This this is to get us to police ourselves mm -hmm. because they can't do it. That's they right. absolutely cannot do it. And they can gather every word I say and think and type and look at 
and they still can't manage it. They that's still right. can't know what to do with it. And I'm going to throw this in. Anybody that's heard me talk know that I know that there's an opposition machine at the top. It is not alive. It's a machine. Mm -hmm. And that machine can process all this. But human beings cannot process all this. Well, and again, you know, everybody says, well, what do I have to worry about if I'm not doing anything wrong? And that question gets posed a lot when people talk about the NSA. If you're doing something and the powers that be decide that they don't like you doing what it is that you're doing, all they have to do is jerk your file and put about 10 people who are being paid by your tax dollars to find any little thing that they can weave into a story that makes you look bad. Right. And it has nothing to do with each with anything. It's just that they're building a case against you. They're building and, a case. And, and that's what's so that's what's so dangerous about it. But anyway, it says that uh, this article continues. There's no question Americans have become increasingly alarmed with the breadth of unwarranted government surveillance. All these programs used to store and search their private data. They said in a joint statement that the people have had enough. By adopting this amendment, Congress can take a sure step toward shutting the back door on a mass surveillance. And I'll tell you what I thought when I read this article. It's like my grandmother used to say, when we, when we forgot to do something and we tried to fix it afterwards, She'd say, it's too late. The cows are out in the field. What's the point in closing the barn door now? Right. And so that's the way I feel about this. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you know they, they allow all of this bad stuff to happen, and then they come, they come in behind it and say, okay, now we've got to shut the door. And it's just, it's totally ridiculous. Everything is, is working in slow motion on the fix-it scale, and everything is working in hyperdrive on the destruction scale. Well, um, Snowden was a part of this to yeah. to expose what everybody had guessed all along, but letting us know just how deep it is. Mm -hmm. And that just allows us to be more fearful and to police ourselves even more mm -hmm. than, we, than we had been before. And it is uh, absolutely horrific. It is anti-American and it is against human rights, That's not right. American rights, but this is against human rights. That's correct. That's correct. I, I don't know. I just think it's ridiculous to feel like you're in a penitentiary and a felon in your own home talking to your mother on the telephone right. about what's going on in the world. You know, it, and, it, and I, it, it goes that far. You know, I know. So there are people that I talk to on the phone that are like, well, the NSA is probably listening to our conversation right now. And so they I, get paranoid about what we're having a discussion about. Right. And it's like, I know, we're just I discussing know. what's going on in the world. I know, but they're listening to key words. I know they are. Yeah, everybody says that. So yeah. what is, So it has worked. It has, it, it, has, has worked. it has been very successful in getting us policing ourselves with me and the person that I'm talking to on the phone, which is ridiculous. That means that we all feel like we live in a penitentiary, which is That's no right. way to live if you're not a felon. Well, it's like I say, we're not living at this point because of what has happened with our government not being a government, but being a corporate entity, mm -hmm. a doing business as entity, right? that we are all a resource, and that's it. And, and resources don't have rights. That's right. Resources are used up and tossed away. That's right. And the only time that a resource becomes valuable is when you do use it. That's right. And that's so absolutely right. And it's like I said on another show. When you take a can of oil and put it into your car, mm -hmm. you don't save the can that the oil came in. No. You've already used the that's oil. A, you throw the can away. That's waste. You throw the can away. So exactly. that's what they're going to do to us, and that's what they've already done to some of us. Mm -hmm. Speaking is of, they've used us up. That's right. Speaking of oil, this comes from uh, Natural News. It appears that truly, truly fuel-efficient cars currently available in Europe banned from the U.S. market, and Americans are getting ripped off. Have you heard anything about this, Pamela? I have. I have. And it just confirms what I already know. Every person that's come up with an energy-saving device mm -hmm. or with free energy mm -hmm. have disappeared, and it has, not, it has not made its way anywhere because oil is too lucrative. There's that's too correct. many people involved in it. 
Mm -hmm. And the petrodollar comes in on that too. In Europe, virtually all the major automakers from Toyota and Nissan to Volkswagen and BMW manufacture regular cars that get anywhere from 50 to 300 miles per gallon. While even the latest and greatest American hybrids only top about 40 miles per gallon. The reason, it's difficult to say, but one couple that recently traveled to Europe and conducted their own investigation into the matter says a combination of greed and highly restrictive emission policies is to blame. And this couple's name is Michael and Stephanie Relf of Health, Wealth, and Happiness. They took a trip to France back in 2006, and upon arriving to pick up their rental car, noticed something unusual. The medium-sized Citroën van that they were given, Citroën is a French automa uh, automaker that does not sell vehicles in the U.S., looked similar to some smaller-sized van sold in the U.S., but what was under the hood and how it performed on the road was completely different. And this, this will blow your mind. It says, rather than achieving a typical 15 to 25 miles per gallon at best, depending on road conditions, the Citroën van performed at an average of 60 miles per gallon or yeah. about triple that a van of its size in the U.S. might attain. Yeah, yeah. No, it's out there. There's, there's too many people now that know that we can, number one, have uh, better fuel-efficient vehicles, but... There are also many people that know we can have free energy, which would free up the whole world. Yeah. The whole world would be different. And the, the beings that have us nailed down to slavery now would be totally impotent if we had free energy. That's right, and the people who do uh, find a new way to harness free energy end up with uh, cement shoes and a burlap bag around their head in the bottom of a lake. That's right. Yep. It and it's... It's it's very 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 sad, but um, just think how I, our world would be different. How how oh, would our world be different if people weren't paying for gasoline and electricity and all of the things that we need to to uh, power our lives with? Right, and it's going up every day here. But let me add something that I know is true, and that is that many many people are waking up to this. Mm -hmm. I mean, these stories are coming out now. They're not everywhere. You have to look for them. Right. But they are coming out now, and I think that's great. And I so hope and trust that the Internet will be left the way it is for a little longer so we can wake up more people. I totally agree. It says, rather than achieving a typical 15 to 25 mile per gallon at best, depending on road conditions, the Citroen van performed at an average of 60 miles per gallon or about triple that of its size in the U.S. might attain. Now, it goes on to say, quote, our government is preventing ultra high mileage vehicles from being sold here, even though some are built here, wrote Stephanie Relf in a recent piece for Relf.com. Quote, with mileage of 50 miles per gallon, 75 miles per gallon, 180 miles per gallon, and even 300 miles per gallon, the wow. government says these vehicles, quote, don't meet American standards, but... They're fine for Europe, which has much higher environmental standards than the U.S. This is what blows my mind, is that they're on, us, on to us about all of this pollution, about the clean coal, about our carbon emissions, and all of this stuff, but they won't allow cars that can run 300 miles per gallon down the road to be built and used here in the United States. Well, they absolutely have us nailed down, mm -hmm. and yet we Americans think we are the freest people on the earth. Does this sound free? Well, this no, it doesn't. It sounds like insanity. It's insanity because it's talking it's out of both sides of your too, mouth David. at the same time. It's slavery, too. Mm -hmm. That's right. We have to use what they say, and we have to pay big bucks to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and that's like the... Uh, the old song that was written about the company store, you know, you work in the mine yep. all week. Yep. I sold my in, soul to the company store. You're, you're in debt because the only place you can go to get anything is the company store, and they're charging you out, you the know, yin -yin. way outlandish. Yeah, way outlandish prices. Yep. And, but that's the only place you can buy it, so you can never leave. You can never get out of there because you can never get ahead. I and totally that's what, agree. That's what's happening to us right now. Well, and I want to read a couple more quotes from Stephanie on this article because she pretty well nails it. She doesn't beat around the bush. She doesn't pull any punches, and she didn't uh, 
put on any gloves on this one. Quote, if you manage to get one into the States, they're talking about one of these high mile per gallon vehicles, you will be allowed 30 days to leave with it or it will be impounded and crushed. My God. They're serious, aren't they? They are not going to let us mess with their gang. That's right. And don't let anybody backwards engineer anything or learn anything from it because we just don't want that type of stuff around because then we can't uh, put the screws to you every time you pull up to a gas tank. And she goes on to say, personally, we believe that this disgusting destruction of our freedom goes way past making the oil barons and oligarchs insanely rich at our expense and the government stealing even more money through taxes for fuel that we don't need to use, end quote. Absolutely. I'm so with her. And see what I'm saying? This is coming out now. This person said it the way it is. That's right. We are. It's not just that we're making these few families very, very insanely rich. Mm -hmm. No, it is taking our freedom away from us. That's right. We don't even have a choice. That's right. You know, if there's two items, you have a choice between these two. But if there's a hundred items available, let's choose from the hundred. Oh, no, that won't work. And you know what that is? That's how the mafia does. That helps them maintain control. Oh, absolutely. It is. It absolutely is a dominance thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. They're so rich now that they can't spend the money in a hundred generations, but they want the power. Once you've got all the money you can possibly need or want, Mm -hmm. the next level up is power. You must have power, and you must have more and more and more. It is an addiction. It isn't isn't just something that that would be kind of nice. It's an addiction. Yeah, they've gone way past getting their needs met. Oh, my gosh. that's, That's so far down on the list that they can't even think that way anymore. Their brains don't even work that way anymore. It's about me having my thumb on you at every moment of your life, and I'm not satisfied with my life until I have control of your life, which is a sickness. Well, it's psychopathy. Yeah. And you can go listen to my show on critical mass on psychopathy, and this is it to to the letter, because a psychopath wants to have power over you. That's right. They want to know that they have affected your life. They want to know that they have power and control over your movement. That's correct. And they get a high off of it. Oh yeah, that's uh, again, I mean, that's all that it that's all that it can be because there's there's no, you know, there's no real fear. It's not like wh- Where's my next meal coming from? They're not worried about how the heck they're going to get to work tomorrow. They've got everything that they need for, you know, just like you said, for X amount of generations. It's all about, I just, this is a toy now. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to play with these people and and, uh, maintain control of them because it makes me feel good. Well, that's psychopathy. I know. It absolutely is. And that is a form of insanity that cannot be cured. It cannot be cured. Yep. This has got to be dealt with another way. It cannot be cured. Um, Is it about time for us to go to break, David? We've got about three minutes. Okay. So hit hit us with the news story. All right. This is the IRS head uh, and lawmakers clash over the missing emails in heated hearing. All right. This was out of Washington, a congressional hearing examining how the Internal Revenue Service lost thousands of emails sought by inv- investigators turned into a shouting match on Friday with Republicans on the panel accusing the IRS commissioner of lying. Hmm. And I'll tell you, again, this is just another game. This means nothing. Mm-hmm. Of course they're lying. Sure. Anybody, any child that has a computer knows that there's a way to back up information. Sure. Any child knows that you can do something and get information off a hard drive. Sure. And, and it is a law that every governmental agency has to back up all their work. Mm -hmm. So did the emails disappear and the backup disappeared and everyone knows you can get information off of hard drives. That's why they, when, when they go to criminals' houses, mm-hmm. they take all their computers and, their, and all their uh, computer, uh, you know, like the their hard power. Drives. And, yeah. Yeah, their drives. Every, they take everything. Why? If there's no way to get information off of it, 
What's the point? Well, that's because they can. That's right. And they're sitting here wasting our dollars, wasting our time, and trying to tell us that they're doing something. Oh, they're shouting at each other. Okay, big deal. Stand there and scream your heads off. I don't care, but somebody do something. And what they've got to do is somebody has got to say, I know you're lying. We know how to do this. I mean, all the alphabet agencies know how to do this. Everybody that works there knows how to do it. Sure, sure. You can it's take not it. a big deal. You can, you can take your hard drive down to your uh, local computer, computer shop. Guy. Yeah, know. You know, who's who's got like uh, maybe a degree from a tech school right. and he can get information off of your hard drive even after it's crashed. That's right. That's absolutely and right. And so they're trying to make us believe that with all of our tax dollars that we spend on these computer techs that work in all of these positions that we pay to have there to do security type work and all of this stuff to protect yeah. us. They can't get it, and they and they also can't get it from the place that they contracted to make their data redundant. Well, uh, I, yesterday I was listening to um, a guy on the radio, and uh, he was talking about how they had just announced that the six people that they knew were interacting with this one girl who automatic, you know, just all of a sudden can't find all of her emails and her hard drive crashed, Mm -hmm. that the same thing happened to these other six people that would have also had the information. So you tell me how insane a person has to be to believe, to believe, that word that's got a lie in the middle of it, Mm -hmm. to believe that not only was the original girl but the six people that she wrote to also had the same issues. Wow. That's too much. Yeah. We should say no way. Somebody should call BS on them. Well, there it just it just doesn't happen anymore. Hey, we need to take a break. We're going to cover this a little bit more on the other side of the break. My name is David Tarter. You're listening to me and my wife Pamela Tarter on <laughs> Hash Method on the Pure Momentum Network. We'll be right back after this few network messages. The following is an excerpt from the members section from Pamela Tarter's Factor 9 interviewing Mike Williams, Imagine Hypnotics, Leaving Dystopia. Yes. Um, Let me just uh, quickly, just so I can explain to the audience that the Life Between Lives sessions, if if it's the Newton approach, which is um, what I'm trained in, it's four hours. Um, But I also developed, Pamela, a proprietary approach. Uh, that I'm working on right now and I'm putting the final touches on it. And I have been able to achieve um, the same results as the Newton approach, the four hours, mm-hmm. in two hours. Awesome. Wow. And uh, yeah, I've been working very diligently on that. And uh, essentially the way that works is uh, I take the clients through the chakras. Ah. And from the, sh- from the chakras starting at the root, you know, mm-hmm. then out the crown into the spirit world. Um, I'm yeah. oversimplifying it. But um, it's been very, very effective. And when you get to the spirit world, what will happen is um, you'll get to the gateway where you're met by another being. Typically, it's a guide. Mm -hmm. Um, There'll be um, some energy clearing and cleansing. The soul goes through that process. Uh, Typically, at that point, we're able to get our soul name. Uh, We'll visit with our soul group. We'll spend time with our soul mate. And uh, then we will go back with a guide and we'll do a review. And typically we review the, um, the life just lived and the lessons learned from that life. And um, then it's off to the council of elders, mm-hmm. which I, th- I think is what you were referring to. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So with the elders, these are very, very wise beings. And sometimes they are called the wise ones or the wise beings. And the council will be, um, there's a number of of elders, it could be you know anywhere from three to four to as many as seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, it just depends. It depends on you know who needs to be there for this uh, particular right. life review that the soul is there to engage in. And it's a very, very powerful session because whereas with a past life and you meet with your guide, you're essentially reviewing the lessons from that particular life. And how you can apply those lessons and, uh, you know, to your current life and just enhance the 
the, the path, the life path that you're on in the life you're living today. But when you get to the Council of Elders, they, of course, will elaborate and expand on, on those types of things also. But you're also going to learn about your soul's core characteristics, your, old, your overall development and progress as a soul. How are you progressing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, pattern behaviors over multiple lifetimes. There's another misconception out there that, you know, um, you come here, you, you learn your lessons and, um, you, you know, you do the curriculum this time around and that's it, you know, you're done. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, there's a lot of pattern behavior and it takes many of us many lifetimes to be able to master those lessons. And it's not until you master them that's right. That you move on. Welcome back to Hash Method on the Pure Momentum Network. My name is David Tarter. I'm with Pamela Tarter, and we were talking about the IRS before we went to break. Go ahead with uh, the uh, story, Pamela. Well, one of the things that, that comes to my mind immediately is this is all just a game. The Republicans get to stand up and scream and yell at the Democrats. And what does that accomplish? What gets uh, what gets uh, uh, what gets done? What what uh, rules or laws get passed? None. That's right. And if you it's th- all game playing. And you know what I thought of? It's like uh, Nero fiddling while Rome burned. Yep. That's what they're doing. This is a fiddle. Yeah, that's this right. Fiddling. And Frank this Zappa fiddling. actually had a quote that said, politics is the entertainment division of the military-industrial complex. It's just entertainment. That's all it is. Right. And it and the thing is that most people think that we vote for these people and that they work for us. And it's just not true. They work they for the work company. They work for the business. They work for the company. And the company says that they are our government. They are not our government. They are the corporation of the United States of America listed on Dun and Bradstreet, which does list businesses, not government. That's right. And so let's let's put this into perspective. How many times has anyone out there listening worked for a company that would come out and have a big team meeting or something and tell you, this is what we're going to do and this is how we're going to benefit the employees. And whenever it all came to fruition, none of it happened or it was exactly opposite of what they told you it was going to be or you never hear about it again or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It was just to buy some time, improve morale, do something to help them. And that was it. Yeah. Even in the uh, the unions, uh, you know, they we all vote on all this stuff and it goes exactly the way they want it to go. It's all political. That's right. And until we get this past our brains, our head brains, until we get awake and conscious of what's going on, the same thing will keep happening. That's We've right. got to say no. You know, no is a sacred word, a sacred sacred word no not complying is a sacred act right we cannot allow ourselves to be slaves any longer and that's what we are we are resources go look at your bot go look at your company and see what the name is that that has to do with hiring people that's it's right. human resources and when they changed it from personnel to human resources that's when people became no longer persons. Mm-hmm. That was personnel. That's gone. You are now blatantly in your face told you are a human resource. That's just right. like the oil is a oil resource. That's right. We are a human a natural resource. resource. That's right. We uh-huh. are a human resource to these people. And until we figure that out, we will not see clearly what's going on. But the joke of this IRS and the emails and the hard drives is that anybody that owns computers and has worked around computers even a little bit knows that you can take the hard drive down and recover it. That's right. And everyone knows that by law, every government official, anybody that works for the government has to back up all their work. That's right. It, is, it's, it has to be. So you're telling me that the backup went away? 
and the, and, and the, uh, the email system that they had went away and the hard drive crashed at the same time for seven people. Right. Yeah. At the, the whole- same time. I mean, you know, mine crashes a lot, but yours doesn't, David. That's right. What are the odds that they both would at once? Not very and what good. would the odds be? What would the odds be for seven people to have the same issue? It's real convenient. That's what it is. Well, it's just absolutely convenient, and it is just to see how much more we will buy because every time they sell us this, go ahead and excuse, say it. <laughs> every time they sell us this crap, yeah, and we buy it. They're just going to sell us more later. And and to me, it's, you know, obviously it's an insult whenever they feed a story like this to oh, it is. the public. It is. But I wonder how they see it. Do they see it as, well, we're insulting them, but, but they really don't know or part of them know? I mean, that's always kind of a question in my mind. I think to myself, do they really think that we believe this crap over and over and over again? I mean, it just continues to happen. Well, honestly, David, we are so programmed Mm -hmm. that I think that they are counting on that programming holding because up to this point it has. And, you know, when you hear about domestic abuse and everything, they talk about how it starts kind of slow and then it builds up. Mm -hmm. That's the way it works. Well, and also like that, and also those situations, the person who is being abused goes through a period of, of time where they think they are going crazy. And I'm starting right. to notice that right. going coming into uh, conversations on the internet, on forums, and you know, social sites right. and stuff like that, where the word "the whole world is going insane" keeps creeping up. Well, and that's good because it is insane. Mm-hmm. Just as I talk about humanity and inhumanity, mm-hmm. you know, if you're if you're acting in inhumane ways, you are not being human. That's correct. There are certain things that define being human, and my appearance is not the only thing that defines me as being human. That's right. It is not. It is my actions and how I am. Am I compassionate and empathetic and all of that? But the IRS and the Republicans and the Democrats, they're all actors, and they know they're acting. And they are just doing this for our benefit. They know what the score is. Sure. They know that this is all BS to the tenth power. They know that. A lot but of it, they, you know, a lot of it's a distraction too. You it know, is. It's just watch the right hand because the left hand's doing something we don't want you to see. That's true, David. But it is also that every time they pull something like this on us and we let it go, Mm -hmm. they gain more power. That's right. It's kind of like if you're in a tug of war with a rope over a mud puddle, you know? Right. If you can get somebody a few inches closer to that mud, boy, you've made it. And then you do it a few inches more. It may take you an hour. Yeah. But, and, and, you know, it, it, that's what's going on here is, uh, they know, and there is no difference between the Republicans and the Democrats. They're all exactly the same, yep. and they're all actors on a stage. It's like good cop, and good cop, bad cop, just being roles reversed all the they time. They take turns. Yep. yep. And they go, they and then they turns. go behind the the, the one way glass, and they say, "Okay, who wants to be the good cop this time?" Right. You know, who's going to be bad yeah. cop this time? You know. Yeah. It's just and a play. So this, it's this, a, this article was talking about. Uh, the Republicans were screaming and and telling this Democrat that he was a liar and that everyone knew he was a liar. Yeah, we all know he's a liar. We know all of you lie every time you open your mouth. Mm -hmm. That's the point. Right. But anyway, I guess we've uh, we've rode that horse. uh, Yeah. That beat that dead horse too much. Poor horses. Well, here's here's another one that will add to the insanity of the world. Uh, as, as far as happenings and the way that they're stepping stuff up, uh, it appears, and this one's by Paul Joseph Watson. Everybody knows Paul Joseph Watson. Of the Info War. That, that's right. The, I think he's got his own name now. I mean, he's, he's, he's such a good writer. I think he writes for, for so many that uh, he's got his name out there. The U.S. military has blocked Infowars.com with active duty personnel contacting us to confirm that the website is inaccessible to over 700,000 
service members worldwide having been labeled quote-unquote violence slash hate slash racism. Your comments. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Well, Alex has been saying this is coming al- along with a lot of other people, mm-hmm. but I actually did see that story, and I did see that there is a program they're using. I can't remember the name of it. Blue's in it, uh, is in the name. Okay. And uh, they pop, like, if I were to go to his site, mm-hmm. they pipe, pop up this page that says, uh, this website has been deemed, uh, whatever you said, racist and violent and haters, Hate. yeah. mm-hmm. something else. And it says that, and it says, are you sure you want to go to this site? Right, so So they're getting getting you to admit that you are racist and you have hate. So that's what people are going to be afraid of. Right, and so it's back to to the policing of ourselves. That's right, absolutely. And if all of these service people who do not get any information correct except from the alternative news, then they are going to be even more blind than they are now. And they're right. horrific. They're more programmed than the rest of us are. Because right. in boot camp, they totally break them down. That's what it's called. Mm-hmm. They break them and build them back up. So they are more programmed than the regular people are out here. And we're plenty programmed until, right. we, until we realize it and uninstall the programs and the buttons that they push. Right. But uh, in any event, this is a horrible, horrible thing, and I trust that Alex will get a lawyer on it, and he probably will. Well, we've got but, more, uh, we've got more uh, documentation here. It says a service member forwarded the above printout, which shows that the Navy Marine Corps intranet, NMCI, which serves, quote, more than 707,000 sailors, Marines, and civilians in 620 locations in the continental United States, Hawaii, and Japan, making it the largest internal computer network in the world, end quote, is censoring InfoWars.com in order to, quote, safeguard the security posture and or to maintain the operational intelligence, integrity, I'm sorry, of the NMCI. The message is entitled, Access Denied by Net War Com Policy, end quote, with the block being approved by the, quote, Naval Network Warfare Command Battle Watch Captain, end quote. Click here for, well, it's just for the website. To emphasize the block is not being imposed by an external web filtering software program used by the Navy, but by the Navy's own private intranet system. The NMCI is so vast that it is second only to the public internet in size, comprising 4,100 servers that handle over 2.3 petabytes of data. We also received the following email from a separate activity duty active duty member of the U.S. military confirming the block, and it's just basically an email saying that he got it too. So they're making sure that they're not getting information having to do with what Alex Jones on the Infowar.com website is putting out there. They don't want them to know. They want to lock it down just like they do it in, do in socialist and uh, communist countries. Well, we are, we are already a socialist country, and we're, and we're moving very close to being a Marxist country, and that's what our dictator wants, because he is not a socialist. He is a Marxist. Right. And uh, the, the game is being played out right in front of our eyes now. They're not hiding it. They used to hide it a lot, but it's blatant and in your face right now. And if they're going to do Alex first, then they're going to do the Drudge Report, and they're going to do any alternative news where our servicemen can see what's really happening. Right. They don't want them to see what's happening. Just like you and I talked about the uh, illegal immigration. Mm-hmm. They don't want those guys to know that our borders are wide open. That's correct. You know, and that we're not taking care of our vets, but by God, we're taking care of these illegal aliens. That's and right. And flying them and busing them all over to cities and dropping them off. Mm-hmm. We are actually providing them with lawyers. And I heard, I heard that one either today or yesterday, that we are providing them lawyers so that they can uh, be um, directed to say that they want to be, um, oh, I can't think of the term, but when you're an adult before you're an adult. Um, well, oh, I don't darn, know. They're, I, just, they're, they're legal for uh, contracts and so on and so forth. Well, they're legal to be here as an adult, even mm-hmm. though they're seven or eight years old. Right. <laughs> There's a and term a lawyer for it. We just can't being, come up a with it. A lawyer is being uh, 
paid to tell them what to do and what to say in front of the judge. It's kind of like if a child is being abused at home, Mm -hmm. if he's really intelligent and he can speak, sometimes he can talk to the judge and the judge, oh, here it is, emancipates him. I see. And that makes him an adult. Sorry, I couldn't think of that word. I couldn't either. (laughs) But uh, anyway, um, they're doing this. But our bets are, are, are in the gutter and, and sleeping out in the streets and not getting medical treatment. But, boy, they're doing treating the illegals like, they're, like they've worked here all their lives. That's right. You know? Unbelievable. It's, it's just horrific. Yeah. Okay. Are we ready to move on to another story? Let's do it. Go for it. Okay. This will have to be our last one before we go to break. I was going to say this one is really long. I've got so many stories. Let's do the one about the uh, drones, David. Have you already done a drone one? Not yet. Go for it. Okay. This one is by Steve Watson. Okay. And it says that riot control drones to shoot pepper spray bullets. Oh, great. At protesters. Oh, that's yeah. just what we need. Oh, yeah. We don't want you to see it, and we don't want you to talk about it if you have seen it. Well, we're supposed to be free Americans, and one of the big things about our country is being able to speak. Mm-hmm. You know, the right to speak up, the right, right to protest and not be punished for it. In a free well, speech gone. zone, of course. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There could be a, a free speech zone. Okay. <laughs> a drone that is capable of firing 400 rounds of pepper spray and, po- and paintballs as well as employing blinding lasers and loudspeakers to deter protesters has been developed and sold to an undisclosed company following a demonstration at a trade show in London. Reports indicate that an undisclosed mining company in South Africa has purchased 25 of the skunk riot control copter devices developed by military surveillance and communications contractor. Now, this, on the premise of it, it's just horrible. Right. I mean, this came from Steve Watson at Prison Planet. Mm-hmm. But th- this is horrendous. It is. So somebody, somebody in Africa, if, if they don't want to go in and work in the mines anymore for 19 and 20 hours a day mm-hmm. and be abused and they're protesting, well, all they're going to do is whip out one of these devices, the drones, and start hammering them with pepper spray and other things, you know, and paintballs and all of this other. Okay. The company's website describes the drone as being equipped with four high-capacity paintball barrels, firing at up to 20 bullets per second. Now, think about that. Jeez. With 80 pepper bullets per second, stopping any crowd in their tracks. Unbelievable. The current hopper capacity of 4,000 bullets And high-pressure carbon fiber air system allows the real stopping power. The description continues, bright strobe lights, blinding lasers with onboard speakers enables communication and warnings to the crowd. The company also notes very proudly, the eight-rotored drone also has high-definition and thermal vision cameras and comes with a ground control station to be operated by two people. So two people can take care of hundreds of people that are protesting. Well, you know, whenever all of this drone stuff started years ago, didn't it just send a chill up your spine after you realized that it wasn't just malarkey? Well, I did not think the American people would stand for it, but I also did not think that the American people would stand, would stand and pay for being touched by strangers at an airport in order to fly from one city to another. Right. I could not comprehend that. That would never, ever have happened when I was younger. That's right. We've just continued to put up with more and more and more stuff. And with these drones, think about why would you need to have that type of power? Why would you need to be able to control a society in that manner? What would make that society so upset that they're going to, you know, riot, well, not riot, but protest against something that you're doing? Is it because they're all bad? I don't think so. If you get that many people together, there's probably some truth in what it is that they're upset about. Well, the whole thing is, is that 
the authoritarianism that we're living under, Mm -hmm. that we're existing under, is coming out in our face now. It's no longer hidden. Right. You know, Americans have always thought we're free people. We are not free people at all. Nope. They let us think we're free. They use those words. They tell us we're free. Mm -hmm. They program us that we're free. But in actuality, we're not free. That's correct. And this is just the next step in authoritarianism, and that is stop them. They want to speak out, show them who's boss, show them who's boss. And that's why we left the motherland, England. That's why we left England and came here. Got tired of the boot across the neck. Taxation without representation. Mm -hmm. And we are being taxed up to our eyeballs now. And it doesn't have to be. We've already read stories that it doesn't have to be. There is relief for us, but we are not demanding it. And it's because we still believe. Mm -hmm. We still are working with a lie. And we will not understand that the government is not our government. And the people that are up there that we think are representing us are actors. That's right. They are not. They absolutely do what they're told to do when they're told to do it. And the the uh, the quote that keeps going through my head, which has nothing to do with what we're talking about, is just another example of the insanity. Remember the quote: "We have to pass it to see what's in it." Oh yeah. It's just it's just more of the same thing. It's story time. You know, every time the president gets on and gives his presidential address, I just. I turn that off and I think, well, that's story time and I'm just going to miss that this time around because it's all just a bunch of fakeness. It's just a bunch of lies. And I don't have time for that sort of a thing. I want to get to some truth so that I can figure out what's really going on and not get hung up in all of that. And and this is, I don't know, this is just so totally ridiculous that uh, they would they would even build such a a, uh, a mechanism to do that. Plus, all of the cities now have military style equipment and vehicles, and that's you know that's not to protect the city. Give me a break. It's to be able to to drive through your freaking house with. Well, you know uh, the thing about it is is that this is coming out in the open now, mm-hmm. and there is no choice if we do not. Stand up against this stuff today. We will be licking the boots on our face tomorrow. We're at that point. We cannot allow this to continue. We can't. And if you think you're going to do it by going and pulling a lever and voting for somebody or something, then you're just as insane as these people are. That's right. Because that does not do it. And you can't vote about who's going to run AT&T. And you can't vote about who the the, uh, chief financial officer is at any corporation. It's a business. And this is a business. We do not have a government any longer. It is a business. And until we get that, then we are are doomed to lick the boots that are on our neck. That's right. We don't get to vote on who gets in the Fed either. Well, the thing is, is that with this this drone story... Number one, they have to have a pretty good idea that they're going to be allowed to sell these things or they wouldn't have invested in it. Right. The If the government was our government, they would say, there's no way we can do that. This is worse than communist China. Right. Or this is what uh, used to happen way back when with the KGB and, and, and the, um, the USSR. Mm-hmm. No, we can't do that here. This is America. But no, that's not. No. They're making them because they have gotten the go-ahead that we're going to be using these. That's right. And I'm going to tell you something. We are going to be in some trouble if we let that come here. We are going to be in some real trouble. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we've got to wrap up this hour, Pamela. We do appreciate uh, you listening to the first hour of Hash Method on the Pure Momentum Network. We invite you to become a subscriber, become a member, and listen to the second hour of Hash Method today and uh, we'll see you there.
We invite all our listeners to join us in the members section for the second hour of all our shows. We encourage you to click on the subscribe button, choose a membership type, pay with PayPal, and voila, you're a member. Enjoy all Pure Momentum Network material, the second hour of all talk shows, extra interviews, and all archives.